Alright, now we'll do our first sample problem uh, on this topic pneumatic conveyor. And this problem it states that the sign a pneumatic conveyor as shown and given. We have this horizontal distance of 15 meters and a vertical distance of 8 meters. The product to be transported is sweet and the required mass flow rate of the solids is 0 0.5 tons per hour. And here it's also given the density of the solids and the density of the gas for air. And also what's given is the saltation velocity. So the, this will be our design velocity. And that's 16.8 meters per second. Also we're given this loading ratio, the solid loading ratio, which is 5. That's the ratio of the mass flow rate of, of the solids over the mass flow rate of the gas and also we have this um, uh, uh, this particle diameter of 4 mm uh, no I guess this, this is not uh, oh yeah this is 4 mm okay so 4 mm and the material used here in the conveying devices is a GI pipe which has a, a roughness of 1.5 times 10 to the negative 4 and we have this long bend 90 degrees Okay, so um, if in case the problem does not give you this roughness uh, and uh, also the the k values for the for the minor losses, then you can just actually refer the, to the to the references or books in fluid mechanics and pipe flows. Okay, so um, if it's given, then we can just um, we can just go to the to the solutions right away okay so uh, if you notice what's given here is we have the mass flow rates we have uh, we have the velocity of the uh, of the solids we have the solid solid loading ratio then the density but you would notice that we're not given uh, the the um, diameter of the pipe okay so um, the first step that we'll do is to solve for the for the diameter of the pipe. Okay, so how do we determine the, the diameter of the pipe? We determine the diameter of the pipe. Okay, so we can get or we can obtain the diameter from the equation of, of the solid loadings which is just equal to the mass flow rate of the solids divided by the mass flow rates of the of the gas okay and recall that when um, recall that the mass flow rate is just equal to the raw the density times the area times the volume okay so we have this uh, gas density and we also have uh, I mean we don't have the velocity but we can obtain the velocity since I mean this velocity of the gas because we have the velocity of the, the solids okay so uh, we can obtain this we have the density we have the mass flow rate of uh, the solids and we have the, the solid loading ratio so um, we can now solve for the error uh, area of the pipe and if we have the area then we can solve for the the after okay so first let's let's solve the um, velocity of the gas okay so vg is equal to um, the relationship of the gas velocity to the solid velocity uh, recall uh, recall the concept of um, sleep factors okay so vs all over Okay, so let's assume that this is a coarse, um, or not a coarse, let's say this is a fine particle. Although we, we didn't discuss the delineation between the fine particles and the, uh, and the coarse particles. So let's just say that anything greater than 5 mm would be the coarse, and anything less than 5 mm would be fine. Okay, so let's if that's a fine particle then that's going to be 0 0.9 and 
the velocity of the solids is equal to the saltation velocity of 16.8 meters per second divided by 0 0.9 and you will get 18.67 meters per second okay so you see that the gas velocity is higher than than the than the saltation velocity okay, due to the slip factor okay so now we can solve um, solving now for the area for the cross-sectional area okay so since we have this right mass weight of solids divided by rho times a times the velocity of the gas then if we rearrange this equation then we get the mass flow is divided by rho g times the velocity times the solid loadings okay so if we substitute the values we have this is equivalent to uh, 0 0.9 uh, no, 0 0.139 kilograms per second divided by this density of 1.2 kilograms per meter cube times the velocity which is um, 18.67 meters per second times the loading ratio of 5. Okay, so if you do the math what you get is 1.241 times 10 to the negative 3 that's meter squared and uh, solving now for the diameter we get uh, d is just simply equal to the square root of 4 times the area all over pi and if you convert the area into millimeter then what you get is 39.75 mm okay so uh, of course you have to run it up to uh, to available pipe sizes which is um, 40 okay so therefore use d is equal to 40 mm diameter okay so now you have the diameter um, then we can solve for the pressure okay so calculating now the pressure uh, the pressure drop due to solid accelerations okay so delta p sub a is just equal to m the mass flow rate of the solids uh, divided by the area times the velocity of the solids so if you substitute the value you have 0 0.139 kilograms per second divided by 1.241 times 10 to the negative 3 meters squared okay um, times the velocity which is 16.8 meters per second and so if you check the units then you get a unit of pressure we have 1881.7 pascals okay so the third step is to calculate the friction you calculate the friction uh, uh, or the pressure drop due to friction so we have this delta p f g and our equation is f l over d plus the summation of the um, minor loss coefficients times uh, rho the density times v squared all over 2 okay, so now we have to solve for f and also we have to find the value of k okay so 
solving for f. Okay, so recall that when we when we solve for f, we need the value of the Reynolds number, and therefore we have to check first the Reynolds uh, the Reynolds number of the fluid, and that's gonna be I mean of the flow and uh, the Reynolds number is just simply equal to the density times the velocity and of course uh, since we are, we are talking about the gas then that's going to be the density of the gas and the velocity of the gas times the the characteristic length okay, so take note this is not the length of the pipe but rather that's the characteristic length so that depends upon the geometry of the of the pipe if it's a square or rectangular or or a circle so um and, but in our case that's a uh, a circular pipe and lc is just equal to the diameter okay so again take note this is a um, characteristic length it's not the length of the Okay, so divided by the um, viscosity of the fluid and this one, the value of the viscosity of, of the fluid, you can find this uh, in the table uh, if, or let's just say from tables. But if it's just air at 30 degrees centigrade and we have this value 8 point, um, I think that's 8.85 times 10 to the negative 5 and the unit is Pascal's second okay so this is a dimensionless numbers and it actually tells you uh, if your flow is in laminar uh, laminar flow conditions or in turbulent flow conditions or in in between okay so uh, let's now substitute the values 1.2 kilograms per meter cube times the velocity of the gas 18.67 meters per second times 0 0.04 meter so this is the diameter of the pipe which is equivalent to the um, characteristic length it divided by 1.85 uh, times 10 to the negative 5 that's Newton meter squared seconds or Pascal's seconds okay so uh, you can you can actually um, take note of these values because if we're just using air and at around room temperature or, or 30 degrees centigrade then this will be the value okay so the value if you do the math then you get 48,441 Reynolds number and recall that the uh, the Reynolds number the um, critical Reynolds number depends upon um, you, you, I mean you check first if uh, you are in a pipe flow conditions or internal flow conditions or you are in a um, in an open channel flow because the Reynolds number or the critical Reynolds number would be would be different if you are in a uh, internal flows or if you are in an open channel flows okay so we are in 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 an internal flow um, conditions so therefore the um, the critical Reynolds number would be uh, that would be around uh, 3,000 or 2,000 okay, so if we if we write it here then we have this if Reynolds number is uh, I guess less than or equal to 2000 that is laminar flow but if it's uh, greater than 3000 then that's a, a turbulent flow okay and in between that's gonna be a transition okay so this value is actually this value is right here Usually depends upon the uh, references and others, right? 2,300 or 2,000 something. Okay, so for simplicity's sake, uh, we'll just 
use it like that. Okay, so our Reynolds number RE is greater than 3000 and therefore our our flow is turbulent. Okay, so um, since our flow is turbulent, then our friction factor would be equal to um, 0 0.25. Okay. Divided by the uh, logarithm of 1 over 3.7 times D over E plus 5.7 is the Reynolds number is to 0 0.9 okay and that's square okay so we have this D value the diameter uh, divided by the the roughness okay, that's this is our roughness so if you divide that we have this relative um, roughness and if you substitute all the values, what you get is value of 0 0.0304. Okay, so we have F, and now we have to find K values. Now for K values um, for 90, 90 degrees uh, bend, uh, bend, and let's say we have long bends, we have a factor of 0 point, uh, 0 0.7. Okay, so 0 0.7, and if you notice, we have how many bands do we have? So we have one and two. So therefore, 0 0.7 times two, which is just equal to 1.4. So therefore, the pressure drop due to friction of the gas is just equal to 0 0.03 a 0 0.04 times the total length so the total length is 15 plus 8 okay so actually it's just the um the total length of the pipe okay it happens that in this in the sample problem uh, it gives you the um, total horizontal length and then the total height so it's just 15 plus 8 divided by the diameter of 0 0.04 okay, plus the summation of k of this minor loss km and that's uh, 1.4 Okay, times the density of the gas times um, what else the velocity of the gas 18.67 squared divided by 2 and that's equal to 3953.4 okay, pascals okay so now let's solve for the um, for pressure drop due to solid frictions okay, so delta P FS is just equal to K uh, times the solid loading times the pressure drop due to fluid friction Okay, so what is this K? And recall that K is equal to Fs times Vs over F times the gas velocity. And we have we have this, we have Vs, Vg, and F, except we don't have this F sub S. So find first the F sub S using the, um, the correlations that we adopted. So 55.5 D is 1.1 uh, raised to 1.1. So VG raised to 0 0.64, and then the particle diameter 0 0.26. And this one is 0 0.91. Okay, so if you substitute all the values right here, what you get is 0 0.0025 one. 
Okay, so take note that this one refers to be, uh, I mean, the, uh, a more precise definition, I guess, would be the equivalent diameters. And uh, for now, let's just use the, uh, the particle diameters, I mean, the geometric. But there are still other equivalent uh, diameters in terms of um, the drag force or volume or whatever. Okay, so uh, this, is, this is our Fs, and so we can now solve for K, and K would be 0 0.00251 times the, the velocity of the, of the solids divided by our friction factor, okay, times uh, 18.67, and we get 0 0.0665, and therefore, Delta PFS is equal to our K, which is 0 0.0665 times our solid loadings of 5 times our uh, value uh, for the uh, for the gas friction. That's 39.53.4 pascals, okay, and that's 1,314.66. Okay, so the next step, see, the next step is to solve for the pressure drop required to lift the gas, which is just simply um, rho g h, and our rho is one point two times. times 9.81 times the height of 8 meters and that's um, 94 94 pascals you see the next step is to solve for the uh, pressure drop uh, I mean <laughs> pressure drop for lifting the solids and that's h the height uh, times the um, the the mass flow rate of the solids times the gravitational acceleration divided by the area times the velocity of the solids okay so we have eight meters times 0 0.139 kilograms per second times 9.81 divided by 1.24 1 times 10 to the negative 3 meters squared 16.8 that's meters per second okay so we have 523.23 pascals okay so therefore the total pressure drop delta p total is just equal to um we can sum this up It is one one thousand eight hundred delta P A, which is one thousand eight hundred eighty one point seven, and the pressure drop due to friction, due to gas friction, and that's three thousand nine hundred fifty three point four. And the pressure drop due to solid friction that is 1340.7 and this delta P L G is 94 and this one delta P L S is 523.23 and the last one the pressure drop due to miscellaneous equipment is not given so let's just assume it's zero and therefore delta p total is equal to 7.7 um, to 7 kilopascals okay so um 
if in terms i mean if if we want a pressure units that is term, uh, that is in terms of uh, meters or mmh 2 then you can just uh, divide this okay you just have to divide this by um, by the density okay so this is Okay, so if we want delta P total in terms of uh, meters or MMH2O, then we can just write 7.77 kilopascals divided by the unit weight of water, which is um, equal to 9,000, um, I think that's 9,810 newtons per meter squared. Okay, and that's going to be meters, and then you just convert that to mm. Okay, so that is our total pressure drop of the systems and now let's solve for solving for the volumetric uh, volumetric flow rate okay so q is equal to a v and of course that's going to be the the velocity of the gas and the area is just simply uh, pi d squared all over 4 okay, times Vg and pi times 0 0.04 okay, times 18.67 meters per second. So we have a value of 0 0.0235 cubic meters per second. And therefore, okay, and therefore fan selection should be, fan rating should be, Delta P of fan should be greater than or equal to the delta P total. This is the system, and uh, no, the flow rate should be at least uh, zero point zero two three five cubic meters per second. Okay, and then for the air HP, uh, we have delta P times Q okay, divided by the uh, conversion factor of the horsepower to the kilowatts which is 0 0.746 and what you get here is 0 0.24 HP and if we assume assuming a 50% efficiency okay from the from the shaft horsepower to the um, drive um, drive efficiencies and all that and let's say we have the fan efficiency of 50 percent then um, motor hp is equal to 0 0.24 hp all over 0 0.5 which is just equal to 0 0.5 hp okay so um this is it Okay, so if we review our solutions, we first solve, and I mean that depends upon the, um, this given conditions. So here we we don't have the diameter, and so we uh, that's the first thing we need because we will need the value of the, uh, diameter if we want to solve for for pressure. Okay, so first we solve for the diameter using these relations, the solid loading uh, ratio. Then we obtain the area, and then we obtain the diameter. So once we have this diameter, then we solve for the pressure. So each pressure, um, I mean each pressure terms, we solve for that. And then we sum it up to obtain this total pressure. And this total pressure and the volumetric flow rate would be the needed values for the fan selections. Okay, so we, we solve for Q, and it's just simply A times the velocity, and we have this volume of force. So this is it. The fan rating should be greater than the pressure, um, the static pressure of the fan. So, I mean, you can think of this as this one is the capacity or the resistance size in the LRFD notations. And then this one would be the load side. Okay, so of course your capacity should be greater than the um, the, the load side. So otherwise, uh, 
the system will fail. I mean, the fan selection will not be able to deliver the required um, uh, required values of the flow rate, the pressures, and things like that. Okay, so, um, and then we solve for the air HP. In case that we are we are fabricating our own blowers or or fans, then um, of course we are to determine the horsepower of the electric motors okay, and this air HP is is just simply the horsepower in the air and does not yet include the mechanical components the efficiencies and the losses in the shafts and the bearings and things like that but once you have this you solve for this then let's just assume for now that we have this 50% efficiency then we can solve for 0 0.5 HP now to make this short story long then um, if you have this HP, if you have the uh, the horsepower, then you can actually uh, you can actually solve for the wire sizes and then the breaker sizes or the motor controls. Um, um, protection devices. Okay, so that's the main essence of this. Okay, so in the next video, we will still do another problem or problem number two except that we'll have a slightly different um, conditions and given data all right so see you in the next video